Rev up your engines! Here's a big warning for all you out there with these modern collision avoidance systems on cars, how they can be a real hassle and even cause accidents. Now they're called ADAS, which stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. They're all computerized, some use radar, some use cameras, and they're supposed to keep you from running into things. Well, guess what? A couple weeks ago, a customer of mine in a brand new 2020 Jeep was driving on a feeder road. He's driving on a feeder road, and they're going relatively slow. When he went under an underpass, and the sun was on the other side, it made a big shadow. The stupid ADAS system on this Jeep, I know it's Fiat Chrysler, so you don't expect much out of them anyways, but the stupid system thought the shadow was another guy and it slammed his brakes on. And he tried to step on the gas, but it wouldn't move because it slammed the brakes on. The guy behind him ran into him. Luckily, they weren't going that fast. They talk about this is going to save people. I don't trust these systems, especially not a Fiat Chrysler pilot junk. Here, this guy got hit in the back because his car decided to stop itself, thinking a shadow was a car in front of him. Anybody's going to trust these systems? I think they're insane. They'll never get the software or the stuff to work perfectly. It's too confusing for these. It's not the human mind. It's a computer based on whatever software. Software always has glitches in it. And to add insult to injury, how'd you like to be a guy behind him? You're driving down the road to the next thing you know, a guy slams the brakes on in front of you for no reason going under an underpass. If you're not paying direct attention, you might smash into the guy too. So now you got to, if you drive one of these new cars, you got to think, geez, this thing's going to stop on its own when it sees shadows. And when you're driving your own car that isn't like that, watch out. Do not tailgate people in late model cars. Who knows if those things are just going to slam their brakes on whenever they feel like it. These collision avoidance, in this case, it caused a collision. They, they're just putting these things out. They're not proven. And they're selling them to people, especially a Fiat Chrysler product. They got bad enough just running themselves without breaking down. Now, if they stop by themselves, not such a great idea. And of course, to make it even worse, whenever you get in a wreck with a late model car, these things start to break down from the wreck. Then they have to be all fixed and recalibrated by a very good mechanic. Sometimes that's very hard to do. Costs a fortune. I had a guy the other day, his windshield broke, and he had one of these systems on it. And it had one of those heads-up display on the windshield, too. It cost him over $2,000 to have the windshield replaced because of all the stuff that was on it. So, leery of what you wish for. It might not work right, and it might end up costing you a small fortune to fix when it breaks. Nissan's at it again. Everybody knows they're in trouble, pretty much on the verge of bankruptcy. And now... They're talking about their infinity plan. And Nissan is saying that they are going to have the Nissan Plus brand. <laughs> That's what they're going to call Infinities now. Nissan Plus. <laughs> Maybe they're going to shut down all the Infinity dealerships. I don't know. But as they say, what's in a name? It's still the same vehicle. They're not changing anything, right? It's still the same vehicle. They have a problem selling them because they break down. They don't have what people want in them. And now they're going to change the name and call them Nissan Plus. You know, marketing, marketing. Hey, you know what I said of marketing? <laughs> Show me something that lasts, that holds up, that performs correctly. That's my idea of marketing. Uh, I always get people ask me, what do you think of the new 2021 blah, blah? And I say, I don't know. They just made them. Ask me in four or five years, and I'll tell you if they're good cars. Now, if I road test one, I can say, look, this ride's good. This does that. And based on the history of the previous models, here's problems they've had. Here's problems they don't have. But I can't say on a new car until it's been out a few years to see what happens to it. And then to top it all off, this Nissan Plus strategy that they're having. The first vehicle that they're going to make under this Nissan Plus, he said it's not going to be till 2023 either. So this is the ultimate BSPR, which unfortunately our whole society seems to be full of these days. Baloney and PR all wrapped up in a real shiny package that's supposedly coming in the future years from now. <laughs> Squiggly says, is a 1986 Nissan 300ZX a good car? It was a great car when it was brand new. Nissan made great sports cars. They were zippy. They held up. They didn't leak oil. They always started. They had freezing cold air conditioning. But, and this is a big but, it's a 1986. It's a 25-year-old car now. Depends on what you want to do with it. If you're the type of guy that wants to get one and fix it up, use it for a weekend toy, go right ahead. They can be fun. If you're talking about buying it for an everyday driver, you're out of your mind. Because the Nissans of those days, they had weak wiring harnesses. And as they got that old, 
the plastic that coats the copper wires, and there's miles of wiring, starts to deteriorate, and they start to short out, and you got to rewire the whole car. It's a 25-year-old sports car. Most guys rag the heck out of sports cars. It might be all worn out. But if you want a toy, have a mechanic like me check it out before you buy it to at least say, okay, well, this stuff's still in decent shape. This is pretty good. Go from there. Don't just buy it sight unseen or you'll probably regret the decision. Be sure he says, my 08 Camry's automatic transmission clunks when I put it in reverse. Sometimes it won't shift into overdrive and when I slow down, it starts making a noise. This all happened after my mechanic did a transmission service at 190,000 miles. Can it be fixed? Personally, if I were you, I'd live with it and I'd hit my mechanic over the head with a sledgehammer. With that kind of mileage on it, you are tempting fate servicing the transmission, change the fluid and filter stuff. Transmissions work by fluid pressure. Dirty fluid has a lot of dirt. Dirt has friction. There's more friction fluid. They might be working on that friction. That might want to be keeping them going. He put in new fluid in the filter. That's enough to make it start and have problems. And it happened right after he did it. Make sure it's got the right amount of fluid in it. Maybe he didn't put the right amount of fluid or the correct fluid either. I don't know the guy. But I don't think much of him as a mechanic because I would have told my customer, it's working fine. Leave it alone. You got 190,000 miles. You change that fluid now. And I've seen that happen so many times. Guys will change them. Then they start having problems right after it. Now your transmission was worn anyway. There's no arguing that because it's got a 190,000 miles. But if it's working okay with that kind of mileage, he tempted fate changing it, and now you're the one who's going to have to pay for it because he was stupid and changed something that he should have just left alone. Rachel Compton said, I got a Toyota Sienna. It's leaking radiator fluid from the passenger side. Help. Well, what you want to do is first, you want to have the system pressure tested. Pray it's just the water pump. The water pump is on the passenger side, and if it leaks, it's going to be dripping down there. You want to pray that it's not something like a blowing head gasket, which costs a small fortune. Whenever you get a leak in a car, the best thing to do is to pressure test it. Because when it's cold, it's easier to work on it. You pressure test the system with a pump that has a gauge on it. And if it's leaking, it's going to have to leak then because it's got a leak somewhere. Now, sometimes you pressure test them and they don't leak. Then what you do is start up the engine. Because if you start up the engine, it starts spinning, then it starts leaking, then you know it's the water pump, because sometimes the water pumps only leak when they start to spin when they get older. That's the most common thing in that, but you always want to pressure test it when you have a leak. It's the easiest, simplest thing to do. Then you can physically hear it hissing and see it squirting out of a hole and decide what's gone wrong. There's no sense guessing. Modern cars, everything's so tight you can hardly see anything anyways. When you hear it hissing and you keep pumping it and you see it dripping down, get a flashlight and you'll be able to see where that leak is coming from. Now, even the British are copying themselves now. There's a company called Enios and they're making the Enios Grenadier and it looks pretty much like an old Land Rover Defender. It's going to be made with Magna Steer, BMW supplying the six-cylinder gasoline and diesel engines, and the gearboxes are from ZF. They're going to call it the Grenadier. You might never have heard of Enios. Well, I've never heard of Enios myself either. It turns out that Enios is a British chemical corporation. <laughs> The guy that owns it is an extremely wealthy man, and he decided that he wants to make one of these things. Now, they claim that they're going to produce 25,000 of these things a year and sell them even in the United States. I'm looking at a picture of it now. It really looks just like a Land Rover Defender. I mean, I can't see why Land Rover wouldn't sue him for copyright infringements on how it looks, but uh, who knows these days. There was the Chinese company that was copying the Jeeps, and then they lost the lawsuit, and they're no longer allowed to sell those things in North America because they said, you just copied our design. So who knows what will become of this, but this crazy billionaire who runs a chemical corporation decides he's going to get into the the car business now. I guess when you have that kind of money, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I guess he yearns to the old days when the Land Rovers were big. It's going to have solid axles and everything on it, just like a Gladden wagon or like the old the old Land Rovers with their solid axles on them. And the old ones were solid built. There's no arguing that. And I mean, you guys could make a solid built vehicle. And so he wants to make $25,000 a year. I guess when you have that much money and you're running a chemical company, I guess he got bored with chemical stuff. Now he wants to make some kind of vehicles to go off wrote it. So it'll be interesting to see if Land Rover sues them or not, though. Well, snob appeal goes on. It turns out that Porsche now has a custom watch for Porsche 911 owners. Or should I say Porsche? I guess the snobs call them Porsche. Uh. I just call them uh. <laughs> Now you can have a personalized wristwatch to match your car. 
They claim that each one can have 1.5 million different configurations. And of course, these watches are going to go between $6,000 and $12,600. They're not giving these things away, but I guess really, you could get them one of these Porsche watches. And perhaps if you can't afford the Porsche, you can't get a new Porsche for six to twelve thousand dollars. So maybe you could just get the watch. Just like guys I used to know that had the motorcycle jacket, but they didn't have the motorcycle. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.